Hello and welcome to a Plunder Basics from Blood and Pigment. I am Guy and today we are going to be adding some smoke detail around cannon ports. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever seen a cannon fire, but it produces a lot of fire uh, around the gun port area. And that's what we're going to be adding is some uh, damage to the wood, some burn marks. Cannons don't put out a black smoke but there is a lot of fire involved in them firing, especially the cannons of the air. I would suggest looking up a video of a cannon firing. Uh, there's some really great ones on YouTube, only a couple of minutes long. I've done this before on almost all my ships, but most recently on this, a ship I made an exhaustive guide on painting for the blog. You see, I added the detail right there. It really helps liven up the hull, make it look like it's a, a used ship, make it look like it's been lived in. See, there's a little bit of that detail there. It's a nice effect. You can add a lot, you can add a little, but um, for this ship, I really want to make it look like they have fired the cannons, yes. So to start, we're going to make sure all our gun ports are open. I added some aftermarket gun ports to my ships uh, that move and open and close. Pretty much because I, I like the look of them and I do not like super gluing the metal gun ports Firelock provides. But I've already painted my hull right here is the color that I want. I've added the wash and everything. That's good. I've added my trim. The, the smoke damage is going to be on this one over here, but I have not highlighted my trim yet. I haven't added the red to my gun port yet. I'm going to make uh, all of them a bright red. But my smoke damage is going to show through that, so I don't really have to worry about that. So starting, I'm going to use the same color I did on that model I just showed you. I'm using the Citadel Rhinox Hide. This is a... Uh, a burnt umber, I believe, if you would uh, use an older title. This is a uh, well-used pot. It's almost empty even. So because, and, the, and this is the process we're doing today, is really going to be uh, dry brushing. Um, dry brushing is a technique every painter should be aware of, and... It's kind of for something something like this, we could do it in glazes, but dry brushing is just so much easier, just around there. We're going to you have the brush act like the fire that's hitting the area as it explodes. And I'll show you in a moment how to do that. But first, because it is a citadel paint and there is separation in there for the colors and the pigment and the water, we are going to stir it up. So I'm getting out a toothpick. I use two toothpicks. I keep an eye in uh, grocery stores for any sort of like wood product that they put on the clearance rack, uh, such as toothpicks, uh, stir sticks. You'd be surprised at how most grocery stores have wood products end up on their clearance rack. Even though you'd think, ah, this is kind of good forever. It doesn't say having an expiration on it. So I got a lot of these flat toothpicks, but they're not as sturdy. So if I only use one, then they tend to break. But if I push two together, then they're fine. So I'm just stirring up my Citadel paint. I do this rather than shaking. There we go. Scraping the paint off. It's a, a nice, nice even paint. Now. For dry brushing, the thing that we need, oh, excuse me, um, the thing that we need is we need a brush you don't care about. I use just this, this flat one. Um, Hobby Lobby had a thing where it was $6 and it came with 100 brushes, so this is one of the only good ones out of that. I got a lot of brushes in there. I don't even know how to use this. It's like, 
It's like so floppy. <laughs> I've put here. I've played it wet before. It just hangs. So I don't know why I still kept it, but other than you know, I urge you not to throw stuff away. I had one where I cut it down to the end bristles and used it as uh, for for dry brushing. So I'm not going to add water to the brush. I'm just going to add paint, and we're going to lightly dip it. So there's only there's only a tiny bit of paint on there. Let me make sure it's in focus. Only a tiny bit of paint. Just the tip. And we have a nice towel that we are going to use to get most of that paint that we just put on off. Uh, I'm making sure that I want to cover the bristles as much as I can in paint, but get a lot of the paint off. Okay, and then we're just going to try it on flesh. Oh, look, it doesn't look like anything's showing up, but I get over here. Just some nice, nice brown. Gonna add a little bit more paint. It was maybe a little bit too conservative with that last time. So let's try a little bit more. Okay. Now, yeah, that's better. So I'm, I'm when I paint like this, I am um, try pretending it's the fire exploding out and where that fire would reach. So it's going to be on the edge around the cannon port the most and then explode out from there. I've gone a little bit crazy on this. I used to, I used black a couple times. Black is not a good color to use for this. Let's see if I have enough for this last one. Nope, need a little bit more paint. So look at the difference between this cannon port right here and that little bit of smoke detail around it and this one and this one over here that doesn't have it. So that's the, that's the effect we're looking for. Again, I'm ridding the brush of most of the paint. Testing it on flesh. Ah, oh, that's good. And I like dry brushing for this too because you, a lot of the time, the problem with dry brushing is that you'll see the, the paint strokes, kind of. And that's most of the time good. Like, you don't get an even coat when you're dry brushing. You get, like, a, a powder almost sometimes. But hey, we're trying to get a powder because the, this is a powder bird. So, got a little bit of a floppy gun port. I picked up these gun ports over on a site called Ages of Sail. They sell a lot. It's a it's a ship modeling one uh, site, but the Seven millimeter gun ports fit per perfectly on firelock models. You you do have to cut a couple of them down, but they go on so much more easier than even the gun ports that firelock sells because you don't have to you don't have to clean these up at all. They're made out of brass. Just smoothing these out. Oh no, I'm, I, I love painting this over here. Uh, I have not weathered it at all. I really kind of don't want to because it, it looks so picturesque. Uh, but I will probably add a little bit of weather into it. Um, just add in some more. This is going to, this is gonna look great when I have that red on these gun ports. I'll get down there, down there. Yeah, 
yeah, there we go. Now, that is kind of everything I need. I will say that if you want, if you like this, uh, don't put it on the inside of the ship because most of the time the cannon is always facing out. Most of the time it's always facing out, but it is, it extends, the cannon barrel extends past the, past the gun port. And what we're trying to represent is that as the cannon fires, it recoils backwards and it recoils, recoils backwards so quickly that that, that ball of fire that erupts out the tip is still present while it's recoiling back so it it gets kind of squeezed right around here that ball of fire though will be mostly gone by the time it's on the inside so you you don't have to paint the inside of the your gun ports with kind of the same technique because the they won't have the same type of burns as the outside where that fireball is erupting. From what I've seen, you know, you it's your ship. You get to do whatever you want. But that is surprisingly this. Oh, I didn't even talk about... <clears throat> Shout out to uh, my friend, uh, Brando. I know you're watching. And uh, that about wraps up this Plunder Basics. Really simple. Adding nice... Oh, and then this is a cool thing. With it closed, you're going to still have those powder burns there. But again, this is going to be bright red. So, but it, it looks beautiful. It really does. And so thank you for watching. Go ahead and read our blog. Catch up on everything that we do on there. And I hope to see you guys in the gaming table later on this year.